From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hello? Hello. Johnny? Yeah, who's calling? Hello? Hang on a second, Johnny. Look, what the devil... Is that you, Joe? Joe! Sorry to keep you waiting, Johnny. I was trying to get all the dope on another phone. What dope? And how did you sober up so fast? There's a big story breaking, boy, and lush or not, I'm still a reporter. Then go somewhere and report. I'm going to bed. You want to bet? Now, look, Joe. Nobody sleeps in Greensport, Johnny. It's a wide-open town. Racket, shootings, a murdered police chief with a lovely widow. Sure, fine. So what's the big story? A fire, boy. House burning down. Flames 50 feet high. Three alarms. Put your clothes on and let's get going. You get going. The only big story I'll be interested in is when Marty Blake is charged with murder. Johnny, that's where the fire is. At Marty Blake's. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Greensport, Missouri, to the Home Office, Great Plains Guarantee Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the open town matter. Expense account continued. (music) Item 10, a dollar and a half for a breakneck taxi ride to Marty Blake's home. Its location marked against the night sky by a pillar of flame visible for a mile. The fire didn't make sense, so it fit in nicely with the rest of the case. None of it made sense. Police Chief Ed Blake, Marty's middle-aged husband of eight months, had been shot to death in his own home with his own gun. And less than 24 hours later, Marty had filed claim on his $50,000 life insurance policy. She didn't love him and admitted it. Good case. Except for one thing. The city attorney himself was present at the time of the shooting and backed up Marty's story of a mysterious prowler, supposedly ex-convict Shorty Wells. But Shorty was missing, and the whole thing was just a little too convenient, too pat, especially in a wide-open town. Joe Crayley was going to meet me at the fire, but I didn't see him around. The flames had taken a strong hold, and the whole outside of the house was blazing. The fireman couldn't do much except try to control it, keep it from spreading, and to hold back the crowds that had collected on the street and lawns. Well, how do you figure this one, Mr. Dollar? Among others present was City Attorney Dave Sherman. Well, you wanted to get things stirred up. Well, they seem to be stirred, all right. Were you here when this happened, Mr. Sherman? No, nope, this time I'm not a witness for the defense. I arrived after the fire engine. Yeah? What about Marty? She's all right. She got out before it really caught. She's sitting over there in my car. Then she was here when it started. Yeah. Alone? Well, so it seems. But there was a police officer on guard oh, earlier. I, I thought you meant alone in the house. Yeah, he was out here in front. First thing he knew, flames were breaking out of the windows, and then Marty came running out of the house. No one had arrived or left... Well, not that he saw. Well, you're still trying to tag her, huh? Oh, I'm trying to tag whoever is guilty. She figures, that's all. Not on the shooting. No. No, not with the alibi you've given her. Mr. Dollar, look. She was standing ten feet away from me in the second floor hall when Ed Blake was shot to death in the dark downstairs. Now, that is not an alibi. It is a fact. Oh, yeah, sure, I know. Unless, of course, I'm lying. All right, are you? Why? For old times' sake, maybe. You were in love with her once, Mr. Sherman. Oh, I could name two dozen guys around this town who were once. Yeah. Shorty Wells, for instance. That's right. That's why Shorty threatened to kill Blake when Blake sent him to prison. He claimed he was being framed out of the way to give Blake a clear field. Go on. Shorty's a hoodlum. He was guilty as charged, all right. But Blake was in on the rackets, wasn't he? Well, it would seem that way. Then there's also Joe Crayley. Marty was his girl at one time, wasn't she? Yeah, that's when he started drinking, when she threw him over. Why did she throw him over? For the usual reason. Somebody knew. Who? Well, me, I thought. Took me three months to find out that I was running interference for Shorty Wells. All right, so Joe Crayley took to drink. What did you take to, Mr. Sherman? Law enforcement. I set out to break the rackets in this town and get rid of hoodlums like Shorty Wells and all the rest of them. Yeah, but the rackets are still here. And I'm still trying, Dollar. Now, look, I want to get one thing very straight. What? 
Ed Blake's killing. It happened just exactly the way I told you. That story is true. Marty didn't do it. Maybe not. But she's in it some way. She's bound to be. Well, that's something I wouldn't know. Everywhere you turn in this case, you keep hearing about Marty Blake. Marty Blake. She's the one link that ties everything together. Well, maybe. That fire there. What's the story on that? Well, why don't you ask her? I left him standing there, staring into the fire. Staring into his own past, maybe. I didn't know. To me, it was still a puzzle, a question mark. And I didn't have the answer to him. Not a much else, in fact. If he was telling the truth, Marty Blake couldn't have killed her husband. And so far, at least, there was nothing to show he was lying. I pushed on through the crowd of spectators, the thrill-seekers, the morbidly curious followers of fire engines, and walked toward Sherman's car. Marty was sitting there alone, subdued for once and quiet. And she looked scared. Hello, Johnny. Get in and sit with me. All right. Just look at it. Isn't it terrible? Yeah, it is. It'd be worse if you were in it. Well, I was when it started. Just how did it start? I don't know. I think you were right, Johnny, about that shooting in front of the city hall. Oh? I think it was me they were after, not you. Now they've tried again. Possible. There's no other reason for burning down my home. Who do you mean by they, Marty? Who? I don't know. Whoever killed Ed, I guess. If you know, you'd better tell me while you still can. If somebody is out to get you, if that's what's behind all this, then they obviously mean business. I don't know, Johnny. I told you that. Well, how about a guess, then? Oh, maybe Shorty Wells. I don't know. Why? Why? The man he threatened is already dead. Why would he go after you? Maybe to get even. He told me he hated me when I broke off with him. It's just the kind of thing he'd think of doing. Or didn't you know he was in love with me once? Oh, I knew. I'm asking you, how did the fire start? I don't know, really. After you left this evening, I lay down on the sofa. I'd well, been drinking, as you know, and I guess I just well, went to sleep anyway. No one else had been there after I left? No. Anyway, I woke up with smoke all around and flames and all. It was terrible, Johnny. I was just lucky I got out alive. You always were lucky, Marty. Joe, what are you doing here? How about it, Johnny? Are you glad I phoned or not? Oh, yeah, sure. Wouldn't have missed it for a million. Has she confessed yet? We can run a new headline on the extra if she has. I can do without any remarks from you, Joe. Sure you can, baby. You're doing fine, just as you are. Get away from here and leave me alone. Can't do it, baby. I'm assigned to cover the fire. Got to get all the angles. Human interest. That's you, baby. You are human, aren't you? You stupid fool. Financial angles, too. Got one there you might be interested in, Johnny. Did you know the house is heavily insured against fire? Yes, yes, I know, Joe. I checked through the company report before I left the hotel. Oh, well, what of it? What if it is? Most houses are insured against fire, aren't they? Sure they are, especially by prudent people like you. People who think of everything. Oh, take it easy, Joe. Get him away from here, Johnny. Only you didn't think of everything, baby. What? It's too bad your car wasn't in the garage instead of sitting out in the driveway. Then all your assets would have been converted into cash. Nice, green, bloody cash. Get away from here. Get away and leave me alone. Why, baby? You can afford me now. You couldn't a couple of years ago. That's why you're tied up with all the other... What the devil? They came from the house. Well, there couldn't Ammunition, be... Ammunition, maybe. Yeah, your husband must have kept boxes of cartridges hey, around look, the house. Look, there by the cellar door. Somebody's staggering up out of the basement. Johnny, look. He, he's got a gun in his hand. I can't He's be. falling down on the ground. Come on, Joe. Yeah. Oh, man. When the dam breaks, everything goes. How could anybody come out of that thing alive? We Greens Porters are tough cookies, Johnny. And lucky, apparently. He's passed out cold. Another minute and he wouldn't have made it. His clothes are smoldering there. Yeah. Let's turn him over and get that coat yeah, off. Right. Easy now. All right. Oh, good Lord. What's the matter? This is the boy everybody in town has been looking for. Shorty Wells. Room 604. Greensport City Hospital. Time midnight. The time when the pulse of living starts to slow down. The beginning of the quiet time. When the city sleeps and the nurses and interns walk even more softly. When a ticking clock becomes a drumbeat in the ears of restless patients. The time of crises when battles for life are fought in silence and won or lost. A battle like that was being fought in 604, 
witnessed at the moment by myself and city attorney Dave Sherman. Alice is always the tough part, the slow part of waiting it out. Maybe a long wait, Mr. Sherman. Nearly three hours, and he still hasn't regained consciousness. You know, I can't understand where he's been hiding out since Blake was shot. Yeah, well, it's hard to tell. I've turned this town upside down, I tell you. I just can't understand it. Oh, I can't understand a lot of things. It's just another one of a lot of things about this case that are hard to figure out. Well, it's tied up with the rackets, that's what I'm sure of. I'm not sure of anything about this mess. Yes, if we could just tag the person behind them, we could wrap it up. If we get only... Oh, excuse me. I'll get it. Dave Sherman speaking. Oh, yes, Mayor. Oh, Dr. Morton says he may hang on for a day or two, but as far as pulling through, he hasn't got much chance. Oh, he hasn't been conscious at all yet. Yes, sir. Yes, I'll keep in touch. I'll let you know the minute there's an... All right, Mayor. Good night. Mayor Lyons, huh? Yeah. He's a real fuss budget sometimes. He ought to go to bed. And... Wait a second. Hey, he's trying to talk. Oh. False alarm again. Dollar, do you think he started that fire? Oh, I don't know. If he did, he got caught in his own trap. I just can't figure what he'd hope to gain by doing anything. Johnny. Dave. Hi. Has he been able to talk yet? Not yet, Joe. Get your story found? Just under the wire. Of course, it consisted mainly of questions. Well, Shorty Wells has the answers. If you were only able to give them out. I can't figure him firing those shots, Johnny. I can't either. He fired them before he came out of the blaze. He apparently wasn't trying to shoot anyone. He couldn't even see anyone the way he's burned. I'm afraid all we can do is wait. At least we'll know the whole story once he's able to talk. Suppose he never is able. Well, he's the only lead we've had. And he's the only one we've got now. The whole case is lying right there on that bed. If Shorty Wells dies without regaining consciousness... Then we can drop it and forget it. Because we're beat. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, death strikes again, lashes out violently, and mistakes its target. And a wide open town blows sky high. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>